Hello, my name is Hao Xiang Yang, and today I'm going to present the work uh, of optimal power flow in distribution networks. And we are going to introduce a new concept called stochastic n minus one disruptions in the power system. This is a work joined with uh, my colleague Harsha Nagarajan from Los Alamos National Lab. So uh, we are going to first introduce what is a distribution networks and uh, what realistic modeling features we are going to include. And then we are going to talk about what is a stochastic disruption, how we link that disruption back to electricity contingencies. And we are going to formulate a multi-stage stochastic program for this problem. To solve this problem, we are proposing a stochastic dual dynamic programming based decomposition algorithm and then show the experiment result, results for this problem. We are going to conclude this uh, presentation with some insight and some future directions. Here we illustrate the structure of uh, electricity power system. So the power gets generated from the power plant and then transmitted through high voltage transmission lines uh, finally gets delivered by low voltage uh, distribution networks to customers uh, so the distribution networks as we show here in the red box is a has a tree topology and we focus on the optimal power flow problem with a 15 minute decision period and since the um, the dynamics of a power flow is usually non-linear, non-convex. We're going to use a Lindist flow formulation to convexify the uh, mechanism. Other realistic modeling features we include here are the distributed energy resources. We're going to model the diesel generators in some buses, and we're going to include the ramping constraints between the periods. We are also going to set up batteries uh, with the piecewise linear efficiency curve shown as in this figure. Uh, we are going to convexify it uh, using the relaxed area below the curve so that we keep a nice convexity property. And for the batteries, we are going to decide how much output capacity we are going to set up at the very beginning of the time horizon. It is possible that we see some components of this distribution network break, and we call such failure as contingency. If we have a single component failure, we call it an minus one contingency, and we denote this contingency set as omega. A contingency we assume that lasts tall time periods, and after that, the system will recover to everything functional. During a contingency, we assume that only that failed components will malfunction and other components are not affected. We assume that the random timing for the contingency, which is different from the previous literature where they assume that the contingency is possible to occur every single time period. We can model such contingency using the concept of the stochastic disruptions. A stochastic disruption can be defined as the infrequent event with random timing that significantly alters model parameters. So here we illustrate the stochastic disruption in this figure compared to the traditional multi-stage stochastic program on the left. So in a multi-stage uh, decision-making problem, uh, every single time period, uh, you can see some uncertainty, thus you have multiple scenarios in the scenario tree every single time period. However, in the stochastic disruption case, you see the disruption and then the recourse action takes place. If you don't see the disruption, you will carry out a nominal plan until the end of the time horizon, which is shown in this red box. After the last disruption, you assume that it is going to be deterministic for the rest of the time horizon. And we assume that there is a known dis probability distribution for the time between two disruption occurrence. We can still use a multi-stage stochastic program to model such stochastic disruption. The key is to identify the value functions in this problem. 
The value function will represent the future cost, and it is independent of the history given that a disruption scenario omega occurs at time t. So in this figure, we can see this part of the tree represents that a scenario omega occurs at time t period 2. And it will depend on where it stands at the time period 2, which includes the generation, the battery inventory at time period 2, and the battery capacity set up at the very beginning of the time horizon. And we denote the value functions as f omega t. So for the first stage problem, we can define the operations cost between time period t1 and t2 as c. It includes two parts. One is the generation cost here, and the other one is the low mismatch cost. The low mismatch cost is a penalization on the potential load shed or the overgeneration. And then with this cost function defined, we can write down the objective function of the first stage problem as to minimize the total cost, which includes the battery setup, capacity setup cost, and the expected operations cost. Here, the expectation is calculated based on the scenario uh, probabilities for each disruption. So for a disruption that takes t time periods to occur with the scenario omega, the cost includes two parts. The first one is the operations cost between time period 1 and t, and then the future operations cost starting from time t plus 1, with the scenario given as omega. We're going to build our constraints in the optimal power flow setting. For all time periods from 1 to t, we include the linearized power flow equations, the Kirchhoff's current law, the thermal limits for both the lines and batteries, and uh, the ramping constraints for the generators. We also need to construct the battery efficiency curves using the relaxed format and all the engineering constraints including the bonds on the generation, the battery capacity setup, the battery inventories, and the voltages. For the later stages, it's quite similar to the first stage. The only difference is, is that we need to con con uh, consider the recovery time tau. So for this example, if a disruption occurs at time period 2, and the tau equals to 2, that means that there is not going to be another disruption occurring until time period 5. We need to mark the failed components based on the scenarios realized, and we need to make sure that the information is passed to the recourse action is going to be consistent according to the non-anticipativity rule. So we need to pass the information including the previous time period's generation and the battery inventory and the initial battery capacity setup. So for this multi-period stochastic program, we can solve it using an SDDP-based decomposition algorithm. It is first proposed in 1991 to optimize the Brazilian hydroelectric system. It is essentially a cut generation algorithm to lower approximate for every value function. In the forward pass, we generate a, a bunch of sample paths and obtain a series of disruptions and candidate solutions. And based on those solutions, we can generate the gradients and the cuts to approximate those value functions. The Bender's card cuts are generated by directly solving the dual formulation in our setting as the primal formulation solution usually leads to a numerical issue. Since we don't have uh, uncertainty at every single time period like what's in the traditional SDDP algorithm, we can generate a much sparser car sharing algorithm for just the specific T omega pair where a disruption occurs. Next, we are going to detail our computational experiment setup. We use a IEEE 13 bus case and a synthetic demand profile. 
We use jump to model the problem and uh, we use Groovy to solve the problem. So you can see here we illustrate our test case as this. We set up some diesel generators and batteries so that uh, every single time the disruption will not lead to some unrecoverable uh, load shed or load unsatisfaction. We assume that uh, in between two disruption occurrence, the time follows a discretized uh, exponential distribution and uh, an equal probability for all scenarios of disruptions. We penalize the potential power mismatch with a unit penalty cost of $10,000. So here we can see that the lower bound progress as more iterations piles up in the, our SDDP algorithm. We can see with the different length of time horizons, all, the algorithm always converge, but with a longer length, it converges slower. And we compare our time performance of our SDDP algorithm with an extensive formulation solved directly. Uh, apparently, the extensive formulation, the problem size grows exponentially as the number of disruptions, which is shown here that if we enlarge our time horizon, the number of potential disruptions is going to increase, and the memory issue will easily pop up for the extensive formulation. While for our SDTP algorithm, it will always converge no matter what time horizon length is. And with more disruption scenarios, extensive formulation also suffers with a larger scenario tree and it can could go out of memory. But for our SDTP algorithm, it does not suffer from that expansion of the number of scenarios. So then we can see the value of our stochastic policy compared to a deterministic policy, where we assume that no disruption is uh, happening when we take the actions. So we first uh, solve a deterministic problem covering the entire horizon for a specific sample path, and then we'll see some disruption occurring. Once it occurs, uh, we resolve a deterministic optimization problem assuming no disruption is occurring, and then we carry it out until the end of the time horizon. We can see that our stochastic policy will yield a larger than 60% cost benefit by in installing more battery capacities. We also want to do some sensitivity analysis here. We want to see how much we want to afford so that to harden some lines to exclude itself from disruption or how much impact it can create by changing the recovery time. So here we can see for different lines, uh, hardening them means excluding them from the possibility of disruption, and they yield significantly various uh, cost savings. So for this example, line 1013 is quite important, and it will yield a large percentage cost saving. For the decision maker, it tells them that it's possible, it's more beneficial to harden such line that yields a larger cost saving. And a general trend for the recovery time is the longer the recovery time, the cost is going to be larger. So, which means that it's better to fix the components in the power system quickly. In conclusion, we set up a realistic uh, optimal power flow problem considering n minus 1 contingencies using the stochastic disruption model. And we formulate a multi-stage stochastic program with a random size stage and a random number of stages. And we use a modified SDDP-based decomposition method to solve this problem. It is first proposed and it will converge in a reasonable time. We can show that our stochastic policy is significantly better than its deterministic counterpart in terms of the cost, and uh, it also reveals some operational insights uh, regarding whether to harden some lines or how much impact the recovery time has. So thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. And here is a list of 
references.